So in the last tutorial, I talked about how to make a dynamic string so that we can get the COVID-19 or the, or the coronavirus data from the European CDC daily automatically. Well, our pattern turned out to not be um, foolproof. So we're gonna fix that in this quick tutorial and then we'll go on to a few other things to clean it up a little bit. Let me explain to you what's going on. So uh, we had system date in here because the date changed. Now, if you go to the actual CDC for the European CDC site, you would see publications and data and you'll find the data right here, easily accessible. So if you right click on it and you go to copy link address, what we're gonna notice is, if I paste it down here, it's already pasted actually, if I paste it down here, letter for letter it's the same as what URL one would be, except for it's got an X at the end of the extension and our previous one did not. So this is a really good example of real world data and how it, uh, you know, the stuff you have to deal with, no kidding. Um, but this is not it. So um, let me walk, th walk you through the other problems and we'll add on a little bit more to this tutorial. So let's add that X in there. That's fine. But now our read Excel function will still, uh, our read Excel function will only work for the XLS extension and not XLSX. So let's change that function to read underscore XLSX. So read underscore XLSX. Now it should work. So now I can run this chunk and it's gonna use the system data as always and it should run. So let's go ahead and run that. Simple as that. So if you watched the previous tutorial, that no longer applies. You have to update it to this. Now let me show you where the next problem is. I did notice something, but I'm not sure why. It still worked with this .xls uh, function here. So either way, it works. So let's just keep it that way for now. Now we go down to sum, and we're going to sum all the new deaths. You're going to find that this does not work. Huh. I'm confused. Oh, it does not work. It, it, it didn't give an error, but it gives a warning. So if you look at this, it says unknown or uninitialized column. There is no column called new deaths anymore. How do we know that? Well, let's figure that out as we troubleshoot this. Um, I'm, like, I'm gonna go down to the console here and let's do names and then just type in DF. So it's gonna give us all the column names. And you'll see I have one through seven and I have no new deaths. I have deaths. They've changed the names of the features of the, of the columns. So we have to fix that. So to fix that, we can get rid of the word new, rerun this, and we should be fine. Now that being said, what, let's let's not we're not really cleaning up the data. We're just exploring the data. So let's change this to COVID explore, something like that. And we're gonna run this chunk first, and then underneath this chunk, I'm actually gonna do some narrative and say there are or there have been. And now instead of um, not assigning this to a variable, let's do that. Let's just call it uh, COVID death total. And then we can run it. So we can actually store that into a variable. You see it over here in our environment. So there have been, and then we can do a back tick. That's the letter to the left of the one, not the quote. Type in the letter R to say, hey, I'm gonna insert a little bit of R code inside of my narrative. And the code I wanna insert after I've run it above is the actual death rate so covid death total back tick to close it and you see it turns a different color so there have been blank death since and then we can add back tick r because we're going to we're going to use the r language and we're going to use sys.date open parenthesis close parenthesis and then we'll add a um, period so now we have that you can't see those totals right now because we haven't rendered this yet. Um, what you could do is you can copy this, you can paste it down here and kind of get an idea. Oh, okay, it's 7103, what's the system date? You can do the same thing and kind of see what it's gonna look like when it is rendered. All right, so we've got that figured out. Let's scroll down a little bit further to our, um, we have no other header here, but we can call this, um, well, we're just getting the death rate, so. Um, right here, we group by country exposed. We don't have that anymore. Remember, the names were changed. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's actually talk about those names in our narrative and say um, the features we have are, and then I'll name them. 
right? So I will do backtick r space names of what's in that data frame backtick. Now we have the names. Now what are they? Well, we can do it again down here. Names, no problem. Df. So we know that country expose is no longer there, but countries and territories is. So let's go ahead and just change these up so we have a working program again. Countries and territories. Notice the back ticks because there's spaces inside of this feature or variable name. Uh, mutate is when you're going to create a brand new variable that's not in the data set. So you're going to mutate the data set into um, adding something else. So we're going to call that something else, death rate. We're going to set it equal to the sum of all. You're going to see that this isn't the best way to do it, but we're going to take the sum of all the new confirmed cases, but again, they've changed the name. Now, this is a real life business um, problem that we have. The business unit decided to rename it because it's more aesthetically pleasing, but it breaks all your programming. So that's why you have to keep the transparency and the communication between the business unit and the developers, the statisticians, et cetera, et cetera. So let's call this uh, cases because that's what it's called now. And then again, there's no such thing as new deaths. It's just called deaths. So now we should be good. We can hit the play button here and we have um, our data frame. Now let me show you when we render this that it's going to add this data to our, our rendered file. So our markdown render and then we're just going to type in uh, in quotes script one.rmd because that's what this is called. Hit enter. Should have no issues. You'll see script one.nb notebook.html. So click on it. View in web browser. And what do we have? So we have COVID cases in R. We have our, hey, this is where we're getting our data from. We should probably date this somehow. Uh, but the number of deaths, we have some code here. We can hide the code if we'd like. We can not hide it. Uh, here's some of our stats. The number of deaths in 2000 since this date is 7103. So it's getting up there. And then here's the actual data that if somebody wanted to. And we'll, we'll change how this looks later on in other tutorials. Um, but I want to show you one other thing before we call this one quits. Let's go back to our R. And you'll notice that um, some of this code wasn't there. So like this, actually this code was here. Library HTTR, let's see. Uh, no. Show all code. Well, it's not showing that code. <laughs> all right, so let's click on this little gearbox. And you see these little uh, custom settings here? I think we can either um, click them to the right or the left. It's actually changed since the last time I played with this. Just don't want to do that. So let's put these all to the right and it'll show all code. Let's just try it. And I believe we should be good. So click down on the console, up arrow, or repeat the last command. And let's see if that worked. Open in web browser. We do not have the code. Oh, it's all fun and games until it doesn't work the way you want. Oh, I've got to save it. Control, Command S, then render. Common mistake. I do it all the time, and I just I'm glad that I made this mistake because you're probably gonna make the same mistake. If you don't save it before you render it, it won't make the changes. So now you see the code and the message here. But let's say you didn't want the code. You can just do include equals false. I'm really glad I made that mistake because I do it all the time. I'll make changes on the actual editor and then I'll render it again, but it's going to it's going to only render the last the last saved version of it. So you have to save your work before you render again. Let's put this cuz this code here isn't actually telling us anything about our our um, our data. It's just kind of prepping things. So let's do include equals false on this. Command S and then we can render it and you'll see that that code is no longer there. So let's try this one more time. View in web browser. The code should be gone. So you want to kind of keep this. I would recommend kind of in between like a little bit of code when it's necessary. But if you're going to show this to the business unit, maybe just a description of what's going on and where you got your data from, things like that. And here we go. So we've got it cleaned up just a little bit. I wanted to fix those mistakes from yesterday. They weren't mistakes. It's just the CDC site has actually changed. And hopefully tomorrow it works, but if not, then we have to go fix our code again. So let's just call this one quits, and I will see you guys in the very next tutorial.